Ryan Reynolds here for, I guess, my 100th Mint commercial. No, 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 don't, no, no, no. I mean, honestly, when I started this, I thought I only have to do like four of these. I mean, it's unlimited premium wireless for $15 a month. How are there still people paying two or three times that much? I'm sorry, I shouldn't be victim blaming here. Give it a try at mintmobile.com slash save whenever you're ready. $45 up front payment equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three-month plan only. Taxes and fees extra. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes. See details. Rolling, sir. Fratelloni's Hardware and Garden Stores brings you a Garage Edgy Podcast number 1,263, March 12th, 2024. 70 degrees on this day in 2016. We are unlikely to beat that record. Eight below on this day in 1956. We have an ice out. White Bear Lake officially went out Friday, last Friday, March 8th. That's the earliest in mm-hmm. in our known history. Mm-hmm. And White, uh, Minnetonka will not tie its record for earliest ice out, which was March 11th, 1878. It did not get declared ice-free yesterday. Mm-hmm. Browns Bay and Wyzetta Bay still are full of ice. And uh, that's it for ice outs. Okay. Hail the flashlight, King. Hail you! And now, from the mayor's office above the boathouse on the east shore of Spoon Lake, it's Garage Logic with Chris Reavers manning Technology Corner, Kenny Olson from the Krabby Coffee Shop, John Hyde in the newsroom, and of course, the rookie. Here is your flashlight king, fireworks commissioner, and the keeper of common sense, your mayor, Joe Sushir. Rook, do we still have the audio of Boom Boom prematurely lighting the fireworks at the Vikings game? Yes. But we, we wouldn't know where to get it right now. Uh, I'm trying to recall what I called it. So It's his birthday today. Chuck Boom Boom Majeski. He's retired now and living the good life in Fridley with his wife, kids, and grandkids. TD Boom? Uh, and it was Boom Boom who was in charge of pyrotechnics uh, for a number of concerns, uh, including the Vikings. And he uh, he went on, he went he lit one up pretty early. That was pretty funny years ago. But if we don't have it now, that's fine. Oh, I, th- I think we can get. It's probably going to be. I don't want to spend any Rain Man time on it. I'll, I'll look. I'll look here. Uh, no, no, no Rain Man. No, it's not not Rain Man. I'm not. What, doing what do you that. What do you think it's called? TD, huh. and then maybe a hyphen Boom. Oh. Uh-huh. And boom goes the dynamite. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, I, this is why I, I'm sorry. Don't look for it. Okay. Why'd you bring it up then? I'm looking for Well, something. I just, just brought so you, up the birthday. Just so you know, if I look like I'm looking for something, I'm looking we, for something else. We had a meeting. Hey, can <laughs> I ask you? I, I want to ask you a question. <laughs> How you doing there, Joe Bunyan? Oh, jeez. I'm doing fine. Paul's brother? <laughs> <laughs> Joe, I wanted you to know that in your adopted state of Wyoming, <laughs> boy, you really. Uh, yeah. I told you I was going to. Well, you, you, you're not I, being I, very. I told you. Yeah. I told you I was going to. So. Just jeez. <laughs> I told you. You tell me not to, and I told yeah. you I was going to. It's the so. same thing with my kids. Yeah. Joe, I just wanted you to know that in your adopted state of Wyoming, the legislative session just ended, and one of the things cut from the state budget was the funding for the University of Wyoming's Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. That is a fantastic thing to know. Hmm. Thought you might get a kick out of that. However, the school's gender studies program will be allowed to continue. You can't win them all. Jacob, in the best state in the country, uh, DEI out in Wyoming. And along those... Along those lines, we have this. The University of Florida is firing all employees in diversity, equity, and inclusion positions to comply with the Florida Board of Governors regulation on prohibited expenditures. That's fantastic. Hmm. Under the direction of the University of Florida Human Services, university employees whose positions were eliminated will receive... A standard 12 weeks of pay, these colleagues are allowed and encouraged to apply between now and Friday, April 19, for expedited positions uh, for consideration for different positions currently posted by the U, and their interview process will be fact, 
fast-tracked. I had something else on that, too. It was that the University of Virginia uh, was discovered to have been paying uh, $20 million a year for DEI oh, positions. Wow. Yeah. The head of it Holy was, crap. you know, their their chief DEI officer was over five hundred grand a year. I think I'm sorry, I, I thought I had it in front of me. I, I don't have it in front of me, and uh, but that's those are rays of hope. I think. Yeah, let's do it. I can. Today's ray of hope. Uh, and let me tell you something. Oh, when you think. Uh, it can't get any more stupid. It really this, can't get dumber than this. This is our friend Dave Osmick, who was in the Senate, has, has come to his senses and is no longer in the Minnesota Senate, although we could sure use him there. Uh, we have a new bill, peoples. We have a new bill from the officer of the Reviser of Statutes. It's Senate File 4846. Description. Climate change effects on mental health advisory task force establishment and appropriation. That means it needs money. Mm. And so I looked it up. Uh, Let me get you the uh, old house or the Senate file here. And here we have it. This is, I'll tell you who introduced it. Don't I have, uh, I don't have the authors, but they're the usual suspects. What number is the bill? 4846. Senate file 4846. Here, I can click on it. I've got it right here. Relating to health, establish an advisory task force to assess the impacts of climate change on mental health, appropriating money, and amending Minnesota Statutes 2023 Supplement Section 14.9981. Be it enacted, the Commissioner of Health shall implement a climate resiliency program to increase awareness of climate change because the news doesn't do that enough. Right. You know, we need the government to do that. Track the public health impacts of climate change. Mm -hmm. There being none. Right. Provide technical assistance and tools that support climate resiliency to local public health departments, tribal health departments, Soil and Water Conservation Districts and other local government and non-government organizations. Uh, okay, the rest of it's the boilerplate stuff. But what I can tell you is, give me the authors, please. Uh, how do you pronounce X-I-O-N-G? Zong. Zong. Along with Morrison and... Kunseth. Yes. Thank yeah, you. and they just came Kunseth. up last week, if someone could remember <clears throat> the reason. Or the context. Uh, maybe I have it. Oh, uh, it was uh, something equally absurd. Yes. Uh, I don't remember the specifics. Uh, was it uh, Was it new gun laws? Mm, I don't know that we talked about. We may have casually mentioned it. The we point, gave something uh, else an in-depth discussion. The point is, this is how far away from us uh, the government has gotten. Uh They've identified, or they believe they've identified uh, a program for which no evidence could be produced and would pour money at it. Yeah, along that lines, before you even do anything, show me the people that are suffering these ill health, mental health effects. I'd like to talk to them. Maybe give them a hug, pat them on the head, give them a cookie, tell them everything's going to be okay. <laughs> and And... <clears throat> Is it still too, is it, have we passed the point in the session where they're no longer throwing things at the wall? No, I think this is a prime example. Yeah, this is this is what they do. Uh, could you look up these authors for me, Rook? Zong and Kunseth. Right. Kunseth, okay. And there's one other one. I can t- it's Kelly Morrison, the other one, and she is actually the assistant majority leader in the Senate. I'll right, click on Zong, Matthew. Kelly okay. Morrison is going to run for Dean Phillips' seat. Ah. These are all Democrats, mm-hmm. right? Yep. And uh, this, is, this is what they do. And to my way of thinking, this isn't what they're supposed to be doing. They're supposed to be spending and guarding public money for uh, highly proven results, there is no way that this is uh, can be measured. Uh, I personally know no one who is saying, you know, I've been, I'm, I'm suffering from climate change illness. Can't get out of bed. 
What? There, there is no such thing. <clears throat> Kelly Morrison. She's running for Dean Phillips' seat. American doctor and politician serving in the Senate since 2023. American Dean. doctor of pol- politics? Uh, American doctor and politician. Oh, she's an MD? Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, third District. She was born in Minneapolis, attended Jefferson Elementary. She attended Yale and graduated cum laude. Failed Academy. Uh, with a Bachelor of Arts in History, she attended Boston U for her pre-med and graduated with a Doctor of Medicine from Case Western University. She's a practicing uh, obstetrician and gynecologist. Okay. Uh, spouse, John uh, Willoughby and three children. Wonderful for her. Okay. Zong is uh, District 44. <coughs> He's uh, the vice chair on uh, committees um, involving energy, utilities, environment, and climate capital investment. Mm -hmm. Uh, He's also on the housing and homelessness prevention committee. All right. She's slumming it in Deep Haven, by the way. Is she? Yeah. And Kunseth, uh, she just came up, and I, I apologize for my grogginess. I don't recall why she came up. And it's very correct. John, I've got it. Uh, Mary uh, is a politician, Minnesota Dia Feller. Okay. She was born in St. Paul and raised in Sartell. Uh, her grandmother and grandfather were enrolled citizens in the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe. Former St. Cloud City Attorney, Assistant Stearns County Attorney. Okay. Graduated from Cathedral that's, High School. Yep. St. Kate. That's what it was, remember? What? The uh, Native Lands. She was involved. Ah, in oh, Coon Seth was involved was. Oh, yes, in giving yes, away the. Uh, yep. Was it the White Earth? Uh, correct. State forest. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, with no, with no, tree. with no planning, she just gave it away or is attempting to. With no planning for what would happen to it, the roads, the homes, the access, whatever. Right. She just dropped a bomb. Right. So, well, this is what they're up to, uh, and um, I've given up. I've, no, I haven't given up on Minnesotans, but I am convinced Minnesotans really don't pay much attention to this. And here you have them seeking money to create an entirely new arm of government under the Department of Health that would measure uh, uh, completely unknown, uh, made up out of whole cloth, effects of climate change. I defy any of those legislators to point to an effect of climate change Mm -hmm. as it regards health. Now, may I tell you something else about the earth and climate? Let's and, go. And, and, and this really caught my eye. I love this because I've said this before. The earth itself, if we weren't here, let's say we weren't here. All right. We don't exist. It's just the earth. Be sad. Just the earth. Yeah. We're not here. Right. Uh, th- there would be pollution, but there would only be pollution as a human could define it. The earth doesn't care. It would, they'd have forest fires. They'd have. Well, what would the earth storms? care? There's nobody to say, oh, my house is burning down. Okay. Well, we have Dateline Huntington Beach, California, from the Associated Press, an oil sheen spotted off the Southern California uh, last week was possibly, which I think means it mostly was, uh, caused by a natural seep from the ocean floor. A seep? Oh, yeah. wow. Seepage. Okay. See, cool. the earth doesn't care. It's just... Right. Now, if that washes up on your beach, you care. Yeah. Because that's untoward. That's You're a looking mess. for... Yeah, you need somebody to blame here. That's an Let's inconvenience. Go. China? Is but China? Authorities detected the two and a half mile long oil sheen Friday morning off Huntington Beach. Crews recovered roughly 85 gallons of oil from the water and 1,050 pounds of oily waste and tar balls from the shoreline, according to the Coast Guard. Lab tests have failed to identify the oil source, but preliminary analyses determined it was not a refined product like gasoline or diesel. So the earth is is leaking, but that's what the earth does. You know what? Every once in a while. How old is it? It's going to rust out somewhere. And and, and uh, in terms of it even being an inconvenience to humans, it really doesn't sound like there's much oil at stake here. Right. You know, uh, what, they got 1,050 pounds of tar balls? Come on. What's that? Nothing. That's nothing. In the world, that's nothing. You know what that is? That's nothing. That's absolutely nothing. Uh, and they found one cormorant, a loon, and a grebe were sullied with oil and were being treated. <laughs> Good. Cormorants can go to hell. Yeah. 
All of them. <laughs> so uh, it's just a reminder that humans have invented pollution, not the earth. Right. The earth's going to pollute. Um, the earth's going to do what it wants to Is that me? Yep. It's like Herschel Walker. The earth will do what the earth will do. Herschel said that? <clears throat> He uh, said Herschel will do what Herschel will do. Oh. This might be a text I have to read from a listener to the show. Fun. Uh oh. I love uh, interactive. Uh please I'll, by all I'll read it uh, I'll read it during the break. Okay, before you go to the break, I'm reading through forty eight forty six here. Yeah. Um it, uh, and it really go ahead. No, what? I mean that's that's the climate uh Oh, yeah, it's climate advisory. Yeah, uh, and it, it really seems like it's nothing more than a money grab. But then I get down to bullet point number seven: make recommendations to the commissioner health of health for implementing measures to best mitigate the effects of climate change and related extreme weather events on mental health in Minnesota. Oh. So if you're affected by a blizzard in a negative way. I you guess get, some help would be provided. What? What? Yeah. What yeah. do you get? Are they actually going to do something about that? Prescribe some meds, maybe narcotics. Yeah, where I think a Weed? blizzard would be fun. Yeah, yeah you know, yeah, or a thunderstorm or a t tornado. Tornado obviously caused by climate change, it's as we uh, all know. Obviously, I, there's an entire page on the Minnesota Department of Health mm -hmm. uh, website. Uh, dealing with well-being and climate change. Really? You know, yes. don't you find that the more you know, the m there should be something for us that know too much. This is stuff I don't want to know, and it's having an effect on my mental health. In other words, we Give should me have some department where we can I, go to. Yes, yeah. for knowing too much. And see, yes. we've, our brains are overloaded with your folly. Yeah, I would be a whole lot dumber and way happier if I didn't know this. <laughs> right. I, and I have things today for GLers that will just add to your problem. Great. It'll just add to your problem of knowing too much. It's a real burden. It is a burden. I've told you that before. Uh, I think I did. I've <laughs> yes. You don't say. <laughs> we're, we're, we're sad right now. Very sad. Right. Very sad. We're sad. I'm a sad sack, the, Joe. The, the cities, the city, maybe not All outstate, great. but the cities have a sad <laughs> feel to them. Yeah. I got a bad vibe. Get some bad vibes. <clears throat> City vibes. Unless. You know what it cures? You know what uh, it cures it? What? Not more cowbell. More outdoor recreational Toys. Oh yeah! You walk outside, you, you Vitamin just take a nice D. big breath of that burning forestry. Eco Fun Motorsports, Minnesota's top scooter shop, also the top e bike shop, ATVs, dirt bikes, motorcycles. Eco Fun Motorsports. It's right on ninety seven, immediately west of thirty five, up Forest Lakeway. Vesper scooter sale on now. E-bikes are 20 to 40% off all electric bikes in stock. Get there now. They got a huge parking lot. You get Kaylin or whoever's there to help you. You go out, you get the right fit, the right seat, the right size, the right tires, the right handlebars, and you'll be riding all year long. And with climate change, just imagine how much longer you can be riding because we've never, we're never going to have winter again. So you might as well load up on, even though ice went out of Minnetonka March 11th, 1878, because in 1877, 78, we also didn't have a winner, but it came back. Uh, Yamaha UTV sales, Kawasaki, preseason youth ATVs, and boy, he always has something that just wets my whistle. Mm. Moto Guzzi, Moto 10 Guzzi. to 15% off all 2023 models in stock. I don't know. Can a guy do it again? Can a guy go around that corner again with a motorcycle? Mm -hmm. Huh? Just around the neighborhood, maybe? Yeah, what the uh, heck? It's at EcoFun Motorsports in Forest Lake. What a great recreational equipment shop. Great stuff for kids. Helmets, apparel, great service. And uh, that big parking lot to do all your test driving in. EcoFunMotorsports.com. 
There's a new way to level up your sports watching experience. Join over a million fans across 33 states who got in the game last year by making picks on Underdog. You can win up to 1,000 times your money just by choosing higher or lower on your favorite player's stats like touchdowns, passing, yards, and more. I find it easy and fun to use while rooting for my favorite players. Making picks on Underdog is straightforward. Signing up even easier. Just head over to Underdog. Simple to use mobile app or underdogfantasy.com. Sign up with the promo code GarageLogic and Underdog will give you a free pick to use on your first cash pick em entry, plus up to $1,000 in bonus cash when you deposit. That's Underdog Fantasy promo code GarageLogic to claim your new customer special of a free pick and your deposit offer. Must be 18 plus, 19 plus in Alabama and Nebraska, 19 plus in Colorado for some games, 21 plus in Massachusetts and Arizona, and present in a state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply, void in Colorado. Concerned with your play? Call 1 800 Gambler or visit www.ncpgambling.com. Org in Arizona, 1 800 Next Step, 1 800 639 8783, or text Next Step to 53342. In New York, call the 24 7 Hope Line at 1 877 8 Hope NY or text Hope NY 467 369. You know, the investment game can be awfully tricky, especially in these volatile times, and that's why you need the best and also somebody that you can trust. And that's why I rely on Josh Arnold. We know him as Mr. Money Talk around these parts, and he's here for you. So give him a call today for that free 48-minute no-obligation consultation by dialing 952-925-5608. 952-925-5608. Josh has been at this a long time with a track record of success, and he's here to help you. So give him a call today. No obligation. That's right. No obligation. It's absolutely free. 952-925-5608. And tell him you heard about him here on the Garage Logic Podcast. Investment services offered by Josh Arnold Investment Consultant, LLC, a security investment advisor. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All investments involve risk. All comments and opinions are Josh Arnold's and do not constitute investment advice. Chris Reavers is a paid endorser. Reavers at work today. Oh. <laughs> it's the end of the world as we know it. And he feels fine. Joe Souchere. I wouldn't quite say it's the end of the world, but if you have not had your carpets clean, your upholstery, your air ducts checked out, it could wreak some havoc with your home. Not the end of the world. That's pretty dramatic. But it's time for the spring cleaning. So what I want you to do is remember to get your air ducts cleaned by Zero Res. Your upholstery, your uh, carpets, they need to get clean. The only way to get the real gunk out of your house is by calling a, our cleaning heroes at Zero Res. Zero Res got a platinum rated cleaning system, environmentally friendly ZR water, which they will extract all that nasty stuff out of your home. Your home's going to look great. It's going to smell great. With their no residue difference, that's what separates them from the competition. The Zero Res Gotta Love It guarantee backs it all up. 17,000 customer reviews that are raving, 4.9 Google rating. Go check out all the hype is about, and you will be sold as well. I've used them. I trust them in my home. And right now, this month, you're going to get three rooms, zero reservified from Minnesota's number one carpet cleaner, starting at just $129. Take 75, ducts, uh, 75 bucks off your air duct cleaning and 20% off all upholstery. You owe it to your family to breathe healthy, happy, and clean. Call Zero Res at 952-Z-E-R-O-R-E-Z. Go online at ZeroResMinnesota.com and tell me you want the rookie special. You must say it to get it. Spelled forwards or backward, it's spelled the same. Zero Res, ask for the rookie special. It's becoming increasingly more probable. No, probable is not strong enough. It, it's becoming increasingly evident that uh, State Trooper Ryan Londergren should not only have not been arrested, that he saved his uh, partner's life. There you could use probably. Quite probably saved his partner's life. And yet, uh, you know, Mary Moriality has thrown the book at him. Right. Only for us to continue discovering uh, more and more the... Uh, Minnesota Police and Peace Officers Association has released a statement pointing out that what has become public domain, it's in the news, the Hennepin County Attorney's Office hired an expert to educate them, the court, and the jury. That expert, who was also formerly used to prosecute other Minnesota police officers, found Trooper Ryan acted lawfully to save his partner. Now Moriarty's office is disregarding and trying to hide that from the public. 
This is what happens in a political prosecution. Trooper Ryan is a hero who saved his partner's life. Anyone who cares about the rule of law needs to care about this case. It's an unjust prosecution. Uh, who said that, Joe? This is the statement from the uh, Police Officers Association. Let okay. me see if there's an author's name at the end of the release. There is not. It's just from their office. And, uh, well, we do have this. Minnesota Police and Police Officers Association General Counsel and former Washington County Prosecutor Imran Ali, we've had him in studio, mm -hmm. uh, said, as a former prosecutor, what we learned today is simply appalling. The Hennepin County attorney is trying to disregard and hide the true and honest opinion of an expert, to which I would add, that they hired. Right. Correct, yeah. Uh, who said the officer's actions were justified. This raises questions about the impartiality and objectivity of the prosecution of this case. Well, I, I would tell you that from Mary's standpoint, there's nothing impartial or objective about it. She has a very corrupted ideology when it comes to law enforcement. She's an oppressor, an oppressed person. The oppressed can do no wrong in her mind. It is important for prosecutors to consider all available evidence and expert opinions before deciding to charge someone, especially in cases involving the use of force. The new developments make it clear that the Hennepin County attorney was going to charge a police officer with a crime, and no one, even the expert secured by her, was going to get in the way. Mm. We knew at the time that they uh she had decided not to use his testimony we just didn't know what he said and what he said is uh pretty stark and pretty plain and leaves her without a case i believe the expert who was hired is a guy named jeffrey noble right he's a retired irvine california Dep deputy police chief and he, like he, you said, he's done this before. Well, he ruled that Derek Chauvin's use of force was unjustified. Correct. Also not taken into account. He ruled... Or no, it was actually. I'm sorry. Uh, he ruled that uh, police officer Geronimo Yanez in the death of Philando Castile saying that shooting was unreasonable. Okay, and here he is again. He's looking at the Londrigan case and he's saying... That shooting was not only reasonable, he saved his partner's life. So this guy has weighed in on both sides of the prosecution's arguments. And in this case, it makes you wonder why this young Londrigan was even arrested. Mm -hmm. Well, he was arrested because this is what she has vowed to do. I don't think she would have arrested him had the victim been white. There's just not a doubt in my mind, in fact. I would agree. Uh, the victim was a criminal named Ricky Cobb III. Uh, he was wanted on a felony warrant, had to be stopped, started driving away. The gun was found in his car. Uh, what What the hell? Londrigan, Do you, Londrigan was doing his job. Do you think that she had this pledge after so many people decided to meet with Ricky's family? No, no. Uh, no. What do you mean, pledge? Well, the governor met with Cobb's family. That has nothing to do with this. Ma Mary met with Cobb. I'm just saying. I that think they it came. does. I, I do think too. it actually does. I think they all caved, and she caved to public pressure. Yeah, absolutely. That was my perception at the time. Yep. You mean caved in the sense that she's going to disregard the expert's testimony? 100%. Right, in order to appease the family and friends and gang members of Ricky Cobb. The freaking governor well, met with this guy's uh, family. Well, then the law isn't the law. We're, we're in a dangerous waters here. Very, very the, much the, so. The law is whatever public pressure can make it appear to be. Well, yeah. That's did the what's governor going on. did the governor meet with Londrigan's family? I'm unaware. I don't, think, of, I don't, I don't I didn't see that. Did. I'm sure not. Did, not that we did, know of. No, it wasn't covered. What couldn't this all be solved if they would release the entirety of? Uh, because we're, we're now they're arguing back and forth that everybody's cherry picking comments from Noble. Just release well, everything. Let me see the whole the, thing. Well, 
Yeah, let me see the whole thing, uh, what he said, uh, and then, boom, there you got your, your conclusion. It seems to me that Elf is interpreting this um, in a certain way. Let me just read this from the strip, which, of course, is interpreting it in a different way. But let me read this. This was released. Uh, his initial review was October 13th. It was a video conference with prosecutors. Mr. Noble offered that if Trooper Londegren shot Mr. Cobb simply to prevent him from fleeing, he would deem the use of deadly force to be unreasonable, according to notes cited in court filings. However, Mr. Noble stated that his opinion would change if the trooper shot Mr. Cobb because he feared for the other trooper's safety. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which he so, did. So then you would go to court and you would prove, if you were the defense, that the trooper, Londegren, um, was scared for the other trooper's safety. Absolutely. Which is quite that simply. Yeah. That's yeah. simple. Yeah. And, and there were other meetings with Noble that they had with Noble just to release those transcripts or whatever yeah. there are of them. Yeah. So the whole transcript. Yep, exactly right. what he said at the end. <clears throat> None of this is a surprise. This is, this is what Mary vowed to do. Uh... She's doing it. Well, it'll be interesting to see how this rash of young, feral thieves will be handled in Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. Um, to add to what John just said, uh, Londergren's defense is asking prosecutors to do just that, release all documents according to court rules uh, um, with full disclosure. But... Mary's office said it provided relevant material already and that a report from Noble doesn't exist. Well, it certainly does, and it yeah. should. And uh, yeah. well, That means you're not doing your job if no report exists. I don't know exactly. what she's up to with that statement. Wait, so yeah. she's just flat out lying? Well, release the video then, the videotape. It was a video conference. Uh, certainly, oh, yeah. it, it had to be taped, right? Of course. It's just Maybe. a shame this guy is being so sullied like this for doing his job. Right. We're approaching it, though, from a um, a passion, you know, a, a passionate side. We should get an attorney in here who doesn't have a horse in the race. Well, and the attorney who has a horse in the race, we could get in here. It's Peter Wold, who we've had talking to us. He kind of guided us through the Chauvin is, trial. Is Peter going to be allowed to? Well, that's the point. He's representing Londrigan, so I suppose he can't. Yeah, we should get one yeah. of your other buddies. Yeah. You seem to hang out with a lot of... Well, when you've been in as much trouble as I have. You <laughs> that's the reason for it. Uh, thank you. Thank you. He, Joe has a team. Yeah, you tend to have your own team. <laughs> division. He's got right. divisions. <laughs> I can I I can uh, I can make some calls and come up with somebody. Yeah, please do. Because this this is just a shame. This is uh, uh, I, I imagine similar similar problems are taking place all over the country where you get closest to the country's tallest buildings. And yeah, the cops are uh, viewed with suspicion and. Uh, you know, there's been a long history of trouble in this country, but no country in the world has gone to greater lengths than to mitigate those problems. And the problem is uh, the attorney general we have in the office is not helping. Well, no, he's no help at all. That's why you have a, a, a mayor and basically openly begging because enrollment is down. And it's not just here. It's all over the country. Isn't that something? I, did we even get to that the other day? Yes, we talked about it on uh, Friday. I mean, here, here is a mayor and a city council that have vilified the police for four years and now have hired a consulting firm and paid them a million dollars of your money <laughs> to create a campaign to lure uh, would-be police officers to the city of Minneapolis. Oh, hang on. I got a great... Why in God's name would you work in Minneapolis? Uh, <laughs> you guys are familiar with the city of Pittsburgh. I certainly I am. It. It's called yeah. the Steel City. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's not just bad here. Uh, bear with me. This is a 90-second clip on a local news. I believe this is an NBC affiliate uh, talking about the Pittsburgh police responding to certain calls. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. 
Rick, what was the big takeaway today? Yeah, Susan, residents of the city will see a major change in the way police respond. They will no longer respond to calls that aren't considered in-progress emergency. That means calls like criminal mischief, theft, harassment, and most burglary alarms will all be handled by an enhanced telephone reporting unit. That means residents will file a police report over the phone. Oh. Officers will not respond unless it's an emergency. Also, between the hours of 3 a.m. and 7 a.m., there will be no officers at any of the six stations throughout the city. Call boxes that link directly to 911 have been installed for people to use in case of an emergency. And during the overnight shift, there will be as few as 20 officers to cover the entire city. The chief said today the data supports that. Yes, wow. it's enough to cover the entire city in, in those hours when we have 8% of the time people are calling. I'm confident in the decisions that we make that it impacts this bureau and the city in a much better way than we have in the past. Well, we, there's some things we need to know. Is that a budgetary decision? It's a staffing issue. Is that a response to uh, they don't have enough cops? Yes. Is that a response to uh, this growing tendency by prosecutors to look the other way when kids steal? So why in the hell should we bother to go over there? So basically, 3 a.m. to 7 a.m., you're on your own, Pittsburgh. <laughs> Good luck. I told you, the closer you get to the country's tallest buildings, these cities are in trouble. Yeah. Uh, but I guess the reason I found that intriguing enough to play is, how soon until that happens here? They already have, what was, the, what was the percentage of the workforce that they would like to have and currently have employed? Well, we're down, what, 300 cops Yeah, in Minneapolis? <laughs> May I tell you, uh, it's not just there that we have problems in the city. We have ice rink problems. What do you mean by ice rink problems? There's no ice. <laughs> That's the problem. Well, I got solved you. that. I got you. Next item. <laughs> Well, you'll recall. Uh, you'll recall. Last week we noted that it cost the park board seven hundred and eighty grand, I think. Yes. To uh, create what amounted to be seven total hours of no seven days of skating. Yeah. That's a lot of money, and what we also learned is that they were flooding it daily, apparently at four a.m. Only to watch it melt by noon. Once the sun came and up. And we were wondering, <laughs> did anyone uh, maybe see a weather forecast? You know, did... And now we learn they've upped it another hundred grand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Record overnight warmth and an overall puny winter dashed many of Minneapolitan's ice skating plans this year. Okay? This, this, Despite, just jump to the middle no, no, because I, I, I gotta, can't wait. No, no I got to report this. I, I can't wait. No, this for is this. too good. I can't wait. <laughs> Despite a Herculean effort to get the Minneapolis Park System's 45 outdoor ice rinks formed and keep them frozen, the weather would just not cooperate. Skaters got just about a week of use at the end of January before the rinks turned to slush and had to close. Yeah, the Minneapolis Park Board doesn't usually track the cost of its iconic. Oh, that's got to get the horn right here. Susan Do wrote this. Come on, you, don't be so lazy. Everything's iconic, kid. You gotta, you gotta get over that. The cost of its iconic neighborhood parks rinks. How long they remain open each winter, nor the volume of water spent building ice. But as here we climate, go. Yep, but as down. climate change threatens the longevity <laughs> of winter sports, <laughs> members of the public have encouraged the parks to plan for more refrigerated rinks per climatologist long-range projections of a future in which Minneapolis will resemble Iowa. Let so, me stop right there. Yeah, yeah, Let you got to stop. stop. Right there. So this year, knowing what the temperature was going to be mm -hmm. yeah. on the day you were flooding, knowing yeah. that, you flooded. But what you want now are long-range, you want to act on long-range projections and build for about a million bucks a pop, if not more, refrigerated rinks. But you didn't look, you want to count on long-range projections to forget building outdoor ice rinks, mm. but this year you relied on 10-minute old weather forecasts and still watered them. Right.
And I love how they state climate change as fact. That climate change was absolutely the sole response for this winter. The Star Tribune requested the cost of the outdoor rinks in Feb. The park board's data practices staff answered that a total of $750,187,000 in labor and materials, isn't that something, had been spent this season, which comes out to $94,000 a day for a maximum of eight days of skating. Last week, park staff disclosed additional costs that they'd missed. Okay, but wait a minute. They have their boards. The boards for the South Minneapolis rink is stored in a warehouse. There's no cost. Labor costs, aren't they already salaried employees that have to go there to put up the rink? Unless this is all I don't, time. Yeah, I don't know about that, Matthew. Okay. I watched them put them up and tear them down year after year, and it always involved a big team of guys. Last and I week, don't yeah. know. Last I week, don't... park staff disclosed additional costs. That they say they missed. They now say the park board actually spent $887,646 <laughs> or nearly $111,000 a day. Park Commissioner Becky Alper has asked staff to locate more information on the expenses of maintaining outdoor ice rinks year after year. It's not plausible that there isn't corruption here. I don't mean corruption in the terms of, you know, taking somebody out in an Italian restaurant. I mean uh, corruption on the order of uh, jiggered overtime or something. This this can't be real. This can't be real. It's too much. And you need to account for why you were so stupid to flood knowing what the temperature was going to be. Somebody explain that to the public uh, who's 888 grand you just used? Would that budget include <laughs> khaki shorts for the kid to pour the. Yeah, it's a guy flooding in shorts. Okay. <laughs> I ran into at the Groveland Tap over the weekend Ray Coda, who puts up the Groveland. I took him by that today and showed him yeah. that they were never flooded. I got to give Joe a ride to work today. Uh, that's nice. I'm happy to know that. But here's the re- I said, Ray, what? why didn't you guys? He said, Groveland is at a slant. We need snow to keep the, the ice in there. So that's why they said, we're not even going to, we're not going to put them up. Both sets of boards are still up. Yeah, they'll remove them. Uh, Chris Denoyer England. Park's boards are still up. Yep, saw that. But thank God St. Paul... Has not billed us yet a million bucks to not create ice. You know That's what, they what they're did? charging you for. They're charging you a million dollars to not create ice. <laughs> you know what they did? They watched the forecast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for the past few weeks, I've been sharing some news with you about Renewal by Anderson and their Acclaim replacement windows. They're a J.D. Power Award winner. The highest customer satisfaction among window and patio door manufacturers for four years in a row. The most five-star reviews in the greater metro among leading full-service window replacement companies. Don't let the metro fool you. You can get these windows if you live in Phoenix. But here, you go to their website and you can verify all this. The statistics and the information are there to verify this. They're respectful, caring, and delightful people, and they just have the best product. That's why they get these reviews. And it's not just windows. It's patio doors and uh, entry doors, uh, whatever you need to, you know what? Whatever you need in order to see out. Let's go. See, you want to be able to look out. Yeah, yeah. that's key. See, and that's then key. look in, too. They, they sell windows you can see through. You can see through these windows. I think you said that one time. I did. Uh, yeah. A couple decades ago. Yeah, they couple sell windows ago. you can see through. I didn't sell one window. <laughs> <laughs> Renewal by Anderson has the best products and the best services, and you can learn much more, including... I told you, a guy in Phoenix had it done. He's, yep. He could see now. Let's go. He could see the desert. He's mm-hmm. seen them. And the cactus. <laughs> Learn more at renewalbyanderson.com backslash garage logic or call them. Tell them you need new windows. You're feeling a draft. Yep. Or your windows are all fogged up. And they'll fix it. Mm. Give them a call at 651-705-6931, Renewal by Anderson. Overnight, Dunkin's Pumpkin Spice Coffee has sent folks into a cozy craze. I'm Lauren Latulip reporting live from home in my hand-knit turtleneck that my Nana made me. 
Mmm, cinnamony. The home with Duncan is where you want to be. Not a garage logic town council member. Here's what you're missing. Council members, we have the ultimate practical joke to play on your, your significant other, your buddy, your brother, your friend, whatever. Go to the store, the music store, buy a cheap harmonica, and then get some zip ties and zip tie that harmonica on the undercarriage of the person's vehicle. Oh, sweet wow. Jesus. Yeah. You got to make sure the mouthpiece part is facing forward <laughs> and you get up to speed. <laughs> and that thing starts singing, and it will drive them crazy. You should have done this to Joe. I know. I sent it to him. I was so excited that I sent it to Suits right away, and then I'm going, oh, damn it, I should have sent it to Paul. <laughs> Go behind the scenes of Garage Logic with unfiltered audio and video access, invites to exclusive events, an emailed newsletter from the mayor himself, and more by signing up at garagelogic.com. Here's a man who spends hours in hardware stores, <laughs> sifting through the nuts and bolts of life. Joe Souchere. Uh, this could end up being a long story. Maybe not. Bendix. Bendix carburetors. Awful little carburetors. Makuni carburetors. Wonderful. Long version. I'll try to make it short. I had to get out my five-gallon pail of carburetors over the weekend. I found a suitable Makuni 36er. Took it apart put all the parts in the ultrasonic cleaner, ran it through three times, and the passages still weren't clean enough. And then I had the aha moment. Mm. I got out the can of Seafoam top engine cleaner. It's got that really long, bendy hose. And I proceeded to flush out every single passage in that carb and then fill a little basin to soak the jets uh, in the air and idle screw needles. Now I have a brand new Makuni sitting on the bench just waiting to go in. What I've noticed about the Seafoam top engine cleaner, I noticed this yesterday. I was really using it. It seems a lot less toxic than the other carb cleaners we use. Um, and it's it's certainly more, if not the same, it's just as effective as any other carb cleaner that you use. Especially, but the bendy hose really helps you get into those nooks and crannies and those tiny little passages. Definitely a product that garage logicians should keep around the shop. Well, you know, along with the deep creep, the tranny tune, the engine treatment. They're all available right there in the chem aisle in the hardware stores, auto parts stores, big box stores. Doesn't matter. You'll find it. Seafoam truly is a miracle cure for everything that ails all our cylinders. And, of course, a wonderful product in the world of bad Yes. And I'm a big fan of Makuni carburetors. Oh, I love them so much. It's like going home. It's like uh, it's going just, to the 21st century. Oh, you look into this Bendix and it's what? Diaphragms? What? No. Here's John Height. I love the smell of them when they're, when they're burning the oil on the Anyway, grease. here's John Height. Yeah, thanks, fellas. This something brought to you by North American Banking Company. Let's uh, let's start with a little bit of sports because if you follow the NFL, uh, things were a bit nuts yesterday. But, that, that, that continued into this morning uh, for the Vikings. Uh, if you missed it yesterday, Kirk Cousins is gone. He signed with the Falcons. Now, this morning, the Vikings announced uh, they have signed Sam Darnold to play quarterback. He was, of course, a, a Jets draftee a couple of years back, played with San Francisco last year as a backup. Uh, so he'll probably be their starter for a year, and I suppose they'll draft someone maybe. I don't know. Uh, Vikings also announcing this morning, and this one, this one hurts. They've signed one of my favorite football players, running back Aaron Jones, who was released yesterday by the Packers. The Vikings who signed also, him? The Vikings. Oh. Vikings also signed a batch of good defensive players, including former Baker, uh, former Gophers linebacker Blake Cashman, who spent the last couple of seasons in Houston. If I was an NFL player, I would want to be represented by whoever Cousins uses. Mike McCart is it McCarty? Isn't his name? McCart yeah, it's he, McCarty. Cousins must have the best management team in football. But let me ask you, why? What happened to the two quarterbacks that were very green? Why, are they still in the picture? Who? The one guy that just walked on. We Josh we, Dobbs. No, he's a free agent. They got they got Nick Mullins still. Okay, yeah. and the kid exactly. Jaron Hall is still under contract. Yeah. Okay, yep. and they're not caliber. They're not. Mm, no, they're backups. Yep. Why are we wasting time talking about the NFL when the most sport, the most popular, most wonderful sporting <laughs> event of the season happened on Saturday? The Madison Square Garden Dog Show. 
No, the hockey playoffs. <laughs> what did you think? Oh. High school hockey. I Saturday. thought Saturday night's game was the most skilled high school championship game I'd ever seen. Wasn't that amazing? Mm-hmm. That was fun to what watch. What a it. fun game. Mm-hmm. Uh, the whole tournament this year was fantastic. The uh, St. Cloud Cathedral coach, too, the, the post game, a uh, little chat he gave was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. We talked about Matsko's kid. and that was So that was happy cool. for them. Yeah. So happy that for those cool. Catholics. Did Matsko's yeah. kid go to St. Cloud Cathedral? He did. I didn't know that. Yep. Mm. It was really, really pulling uh, for uh, the cake eaters to lose. But <laughs> even that was such a good game. It well, was in the, so in the title watch. game, you had two cake eaters. So what are you going to yeah, do? Yeah, and just Edina is my less favorite. But you know what? Congratulations, <laughs> Edina. That, that was just well played. I heard the Minnetonka. I could be wrong, but I heard Minnetonka, which was beaten by Chan Hassan to not get to the tournament, has seven players who don't even go to school. They're just online students. Oh, Is that really? right? Yeah. Because they're seven seniors. They're doing the hockey yeah. elsewhere full time. Yeah. yeah. Wow. My nephews were in town. No, from... I could be wrong. I said that people. I don't. That's what I heard. But I heard it from a reliable okay, source. Uh, the nephews were in town. They live in Austin, Texas, and they were just. I had to explain everything about the game to them, uh, and I had to tell them in Minnesota, hockey is the high school hockey is the equivalent of football in Texas. It's are the those, same deal. Are those cousins? Uh, do they They're, look like you? Nephews. Are nephews like no, little they, guys with beards? No, and... they look nothing like me. They're right. a <laughs> hell of a lot smarter. All right. <laughs> in the news, an overnight standoff that began after shots were fired at police officers in Oakdale ended with one person in custody. While police say nobody was injured, members of law enforcement agencies from across the metro rushed to the area to help out the Oakdale officers. It all started as a domestic call involving a man with a gun around 10 p.m. last night, and police learned a woman and her baby were in the car with that man. Nick Newton, chief of the Oakdale Police Department, says when officers caught up to the car, the suspect didn't stop. Instead, led officers to a home on Greystone Avenue. There, Chief Newton says the suspect got out, started shooting at officers as he ran inside the home. Police at one point were pinned behind their squad cars. The SWAT team eventually got to the scene, were able to get officers out of the line of fire with the help of an armored vehicle. Newton says uh, officers did fire back at the suspect, but the number of rounds exchanged is still being determined. As for the woman and the baby, they are both safe and unharmed, and the suspect eventually surrendered. That surrender happened at about 1 this morning. A Minnesota board was justified when it rejected a substitute teaching license for a former police officer who fatally shot a man during a traffic stop in 2016. That, according to an appeals court yesterday, the Court of Appeals affirmed the findings of the Minnesota Professional Educator Licensing and Standards Board, which concluded Geronimo Yanez did not meet the moral standards required to teach in public schools. The court had sent the case back to the licensing board in 2022 to reconsider its initial rejection of Yanez's teaching license application, which was based on immoral character or conduct. Yanez is the former St. Anthony police officer who shot Philando Castile during a traffic stop after Castile volunteered he had a gun. Authorities later discovered that Castile, 32-year-old St. Paul Elementary School cafeteria worker, did have a permit for the firearm. Yanez was acquitted of manslaughter Castile's death, the verdict led to a massive public outcry and protests in Minnesota and beyond. He quit law enforcement after his trial and eventually began teaching Spanish part-time at a parochial school. Community members are asking Minneapolis city leaders to cancel ShotSpotter, saying the gunshot detection technology that MPD has used for more than a decade is a waste of money. Minnesota law student Alexander Lindenfelser says the $2.2 million Minneapolis that has been spent on shot spotter could be used for more effective ways of promoting public safety. <laughs> research, research by the group Campaign Zero finds shot spotter often mistakes loud noises for gunshots and in some cases could slow police response time for other emergencies. They say their research also claims the technology is not as effective as 911 calls. Uh, Abdul Nasir Rod is the managing director of research and data at Cam- uh, Campaign Zero. He said, what we know is that shot spotter has not been found to have an impact on gun violence or gun violence victims. Well, Minneapolis Council member Linnea Palmasana was skeptical of those claims, saying the technology has improved and has helped investigations. Minneapolis Police Chief Brian O'Hara said the technology has helped responders to scenes faster and has the ability to source 
where people were standing at the time of a shooting. Shot sponder, it, it, it's, it's sp- excuse me, spotter is right away. It's instantaneous. It's right now. You get the message right now as opposed to waiting for a call. What's this guy with campaign zero and what's in it for him to not have shot spotters? Cop campaign zero, meaning zero violence, maybe. Probably, yeah, I would think. I would think shot spotters would help you. And if they offered any evidence that shot spotter has delayed police response to another call, because that's one of their claims, it could. They said it could delay police. Well, do you have any evidence of that? Could you show me? Campaign Zero announced as a gold winner in campaign nonprofit for the third annual Anthem Awards. Help us end police violence. In America. Oh, it's an anti-police violence. Oh. What, how, how would Shot Spotter contribute to police violence? That's just another scam outfit that um, Re Abdul Bahu is getting paid for, or whatever the hell his name is. Uh, arriving on the heels of protests in Ferguson, New York, Baltimore, and elsewhere over cases of civilians being killed by police officers, Campaign Zero in August of 2015 was launched as a data-driven platform with the goal of ending police brutality. Hmm. Campaign Zero. Well, in other words, if we can uh, create a situation where you coppers don't hear the gunfire, you're least likely to be in a violent situation. So let's get rid of Shot Spotter. Then you won't hear all the guns going off. <laughs> Boom! Right. That's it's, what it, I mean, how do you logically come up with anything different? Well, it's no. what they've learned. It's not a crime if it's not called in. That's right. Crime that's is going kind of- down. I was reading the Pittsburgh story after Chris brought it up, and that's kind of the theory of the police there that they will have to answer less calls. That's right. Then you can lower your crime statistics. Very, very strange way to look at it. I don't want to back that far up, but one of them was a burglary in progress, wasn't it? (laughs) It's not. Reavers, go back to that. That's nothing. That is what Chris said. Yeah, Yeah, I swear to God, he said a burglary in progress. (laughs) Yep. How is that not an emergency? Let's talk about it the Come next on. day. <laughs> <laughs> we'll figure it out. Come on. Never mind that. <laughs> yeah. Why don't uh, we take a quick break here, come back with some more news. Uh, the Rookie has something I think he would love to share with us. Very happy to tell you about Minnesota Masonic Charities and some of the great stuff they do. And a program they got coming up on uh, March 30th, the Saturday before Easter, they're going to be testing out a program they're developing called Civility School. Program is going to be from 10 to noon at the Masonic Heritage Center, South Bloomington, great campus, followed by lunch, of course. Masonry has been described as a system of morality veiled in allegory illustrated by signs and symbols. Civility School, what they're promoting here, is a system of civility veiled in allegory illustrated by YouTube videos and conversation. They're basically making this very modern, and they want to do something about society today. You know, Joe... The shocking decline in moral and ethical integrity. Yes. It upsets you. So they went that school in Baxter? Civility school. No, this is not the this is not the eighth school. This is a legitimate one. That's my trying, school. They're basically yeah. embracing yeah. social media to get the youth engaged by meeting young people where they live, which is on various social media. Civility school hopes to demonstrate interested young people that civility is cool. They're taking a shot. You know what they're doing? They're rolling the dice on the youth they're of society. Going, they're going where the people are. See? You see that? Over the next few weeks, we'll be sharing more about civility school and details about how GLers might lend their insights to the program. You would be their perfect mark. Stay tuned. I know some of these people at the head of this. Uh, this is the real deal. MNMasonicCharities.org. We'll see you on the 30th. Hi, and welcome to Ikea. How can I help? Oh, my schedule is crazy. I just want some me time. Maybe it's time to embrace the joy of staying in. With comfortable beds, pillow and decor, mood lighting, and so much more, you can turn your bedroom into the place to be. Oh, sounds like a dream. We've got you. Visit us in-store or at ikea-usa.com sleep to create your dream bedroom today. 
We haven't had many roofers join us on Garage Logic, but Pete is with us from Hire a Pro, and he wants to explain to you how they do what they do. Joe, last year we helped a lot of GLers keep what a roofing company would have otherwise taken in profits. We showed everyone behind the curtain, and the average homeowner kept about $5,600. Minnesota had a huge hail year in 23, and there's a lot of people who still have roofs to replace. Let's sit down and look over your claim together. We'll show you labor, material costs, how much profit is on the claim, and what you would keep for getting a permit and writing out a couple extra checks. Not a bad ROI for letting Hire a Pro manage the project for you. Oh, and lifetime manufacturer backed warranties? Yeah, we got those too. So tell me, if the options were us or someone with no transparency who takes all the money, would you go anywhere else? Uh, probably not. So hit us up. Worst case is you don't like transparency and you'd rather pay full price. So if insurance has approved your roof replacement, give these guys a call at 651-402-3400 or visit them online at hireadotpro. That's hire, uh, and then put the dot there, Pro. <laughs> You'll like it. Truth, justice, and the souchere. No snow melt this year. That means Pro Turf already getting after it. If summer is coming early, that means crabgrass weeds are also coming early. If you want the best lawn on the block, you've got to go with the official lawn care company of Garage Logic, ProfessionalTurf.com. They're already sending experienced service techs out assessing lawns, customizing slow release fertilizer and weed control plans. They're environmentally safe, of course, but absolutely guaranteed for superior results. A beautiful, healthy lawn, free of crabgrass, dandelions, broadleaf weeds. It all starts with a visit to ProfessionalTurf.com and get that scheduled. It's a free in-person estimate, none of that over-the-phone business. And be sure to check out their amazing landscape projects when you're on that website. They've got all their recent projects posted on the Facebook page and ProTurf Services Irrigation Systems, too. They do it all. ProTurf, exceptional lawn care, landscape, and irrigation service. Check them out. Schedule that free estimate at ProfessionalTurf.com. Welcome back, Pro Turf. Yeah. In other news on the economic front, inflation rose again in February, keeping the Federal Reserve on course to wait at least until the summer before starting to lower interest rates. The Consumer Price Index, a broad measure of goods and services, increased 0.4% for the month, 3.2% from a year ago, according to the Labor Department's Bureau of Labor Statistics. The labor gain, uh, the monthly gain, excuse me, was in line with expectations, but the annual rate slightly ahead of the 3.1% forecast from the Dow Jones consensus. Census. Meanwhile, disruptions on the world's major trade routes, refinery closures, and resurgent demand are pushing up global fuel prices again and making forecasts difficult in the run-up to the U.S. presidential election in which gas prices could be a key issue. Increases in the two most consumed fuels are outpacing those for crude oil in some of the world's most important markets. U.S. gas futures have jumped sharp, uh, sharply in recent weeks, are now lined up more than a fifth so far this year, while diesel in Europe has risen 10%. Johnny, uh, Mr. Money yes, Talk, sir. I recorded with him earlier today, and he yep. said, and he's been on this basically, and he's nailed every part of this, he thinks interest rates are not coming down anytime soon, especially before the election. That's yeah, not a good sign. Right. Donald Trump's newly installed leadership team at the Republican National Committee on Monday began the process of pushing out dozens of officials from that group. All told, the expectation is that more than 60 RNC staffers who work across the political communications and data departments will be let go by the RNC. Those being asked to resign include five members of the senior staff, although the names are not being made public. Under the new structure, the Trump campaign is looking to merge its operations with the RNC. Key departments, such as communications, data, and fundraising will effectively be one and the same. The man known previously only as Trump employee number five in the Trump classified documents case has gone public. Brian Butler was a 20-year Mar-a-Lago employee who handled the car service for the former president. He said he and Trump co-defendant Walt Nauta were tasked with loading bankers' boxes onto Trump's plane to move them at the same time the FBI was searching a storage area at the resort for classified documents. Trump faces 40 felony charges in the classified documents cases. Two Mar-a-Lago employees, Nada and Carlos de Oliveira, have been charged with scheming to conceal surveillance footage from federal investigators lying about it all have pleaded not guilty. Tough few days uh, in the music world. A lot of death. Carl Wallinger. Wonderful no. singer. No. Yeah. World party. 
Wonderful singer and songwriter, best known for his work in the band World Party Has Died. He was 66 before, before World Party. Wallinger also spent time with the Waterboys. World Party put together five albums under Wallinger's leadership, and Goodbye Jumbo and Private Revolution being uh, the biggest and best. They charted uh, with the singles, Put the Message in the Box, Way Down Now, and Ship of Fools. No cause of death was given. Wallinger had suffered a brain aneurysm in 2001. That caused a five-year layoff in his music career before he resumed working in 2006. Huh. Uh, one of the pioneers of what is commonly called power pop has died. Eric Carmen was the leader of the Raspberries before having a highly successful solo career. With the Raspberries, Carmen hit the top 10 with Go All the Way and the top 20 with I Want to Be With You and Overnight Sensation. That band broke up in 1975, but Carmen went on to have some huge solo hits. Uh, hits among them all by myself which hit number two in the u.s never going to fall in love again which hit number 11 those two were hits in the 70s he had somewhat of a comeback in the middle of eighty uh, late 80s with hitting gold with hungry eyes which topped out at number four and make me lose control which hit number three carmen was 74 years old no cause of death was given nobody tells us why people die no, all the uh, all these guys are dying. And... What do you think? All by myself. How do you rate that? Oh, by that was a good myself. tune. That, that is, is the it? scum it's on the bottom song. of a boat yeah. that never gets out of the lake. Hungry Eyes, I think, is in the Applebee's commercials now. Yes. Yep. Is it really? Seriously? Yep. No, no wonder he died. No, that was <laughs> that killed him. That, <laughs> all by myself makes me want to run over cats and dogs and just do horrible, oh, horrible terrible things to God. very nice pets. Terrible thing. Yeah, it just really, <laughs> really, really... You might want to get help I'll, for that. I'll, I'll just ignore that and say the raspberry stuff was brilliant. But That's uh, pretty good, yeah. Uh, bassist T.M. Stevens, well-known to rockers and funk fans everywhere, has died. He recorded with, listen to this, Pretenders, James Brown, Nona Hendricks, Dan Hartman, Joe Cocker, Cindy Lauper, Little Steven and his Disciples of Soul, Tina Turner, Narada Michael Walden, Taylor Dane, Steve Salas, Billy Joel, just to name a few. Wow. Uh, Steve Stevens was in demand because uh, he was noted for being at home in a lot of genres of music, rock, funk, soul, and everything in between. It had been announced several years ago, back to 2017, that he was suffering from an advanced stage of dementia. He had been admitted to a care home. Uh, T.M. Stevens was 72 years old. So far, they're all young people. Pretty young, yeah. Well, the last two are older. So, uh, Ernie Fields Jr. died. He was a saxophonist you may never heard of, but you've heard his playing. Played with folks like BB King, Bobby Blue Bland, Stevie Wonder, Aretha Franklin, Rick James, Marvin Gaye, among others. Uh, he had followed in his dad's footsteps. Ernie Sr. played swing and R&B music on trombone and piano through the West Coast in the '40s, '50s, and '60s. Ernie Fields Jr. was. 89. Okay, finally, a guy who had a little time. There you go. And after we left the air on Friday, uh, we found out Steve Lawrence died. He was best known for his vocals with wife Edie Gourmet, covering what's commonly called the Great American Songbook for over 40 years. He and his wife frequently opened concerts for their good friend Frank Sinatra. Gourmet died in 2009. Lawrence also acted. He appeared in sitcoms and movies, notably... Uh, you might remember if you saw the Blues Brothers movie, he played their manager, Maury Sline. Steve Lawrence was 88 years uh, old. Let's you face got it, it Chairman. Steve and 80, that's music for white people. That's what that is. No, that's it's just the great American songbook. It's all so great. I, I, when I think of Steve. So Sony Bennett and Sinatra, then, if you're When I think of Steve totally. and 80, yep. I think yeah. of a smoky living room. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Sunday night, yep. and they're on some variety show or something. Yep. Yeah, Kids perfect. usually get uh, hit once or twice a day. Yeah, uh, The wife uh, is afraid to look her husband in the eye. It's, you know, it's the 50s. It was, uh, yeah, that's a great time for America. It was a good yeah. time. Great, yeah. not what I get on great <laughs> SNL skit when uh, <laughs> Each his own. Mike Myers would portray Steve Lawrence and the Edie Gourmet and they were always just kissing up to Frank. Yeah. You got it, Chairman? Yeah. yeah. I got chunks of guys like you in my stool. Yep. That's right, Ken. Uh, Ken, what's your Ken, name? Yeah, yeah, your Ken. name's Rook. That's, that's how I always remember Sinatra and Stevie Dede. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. And then a story that Kenny sent me on Monday. I figured we better finish up with Monday this. Monday was yesterday. Uh, Friday. Friday what was a couple days ago. I do not remember this. A man in Green Bay with a one-of-a-kind first oh, name. Oh, yeah, this is a good one. <laughs> taken into custody after an alleged disturbance on the city's east, east side. According to a criminal complaint obtained by Local 5, 
This all happened on March 5th. 42-year-old Dee's Nuts Kroll was arrested <laughs> following <laughs> incident. His <laughs> name was Dee's Nuts. Jeez. Ah, now well, I remember. <laughs> when officers got to the scene, two people were brought to a squad car placed in the back. <laughs> Additionally, officers took Kroll into custody. He was reportedly standing outside with no shirt on. The complaint says Kroll appeared to be highly intoxicated. Did follow the <laughs> officer's commands, though. Is the first it's, name uh, hyphenated, John? It is, okay. yes. Uh, the uh, a Wisconsin ID card he handed to police indeed said... His name was D's Nuts Lee Kroll. That is so D -E -E -Z -E? awesome. D-E-E-Z-E? D-E-E-Z. Yep. D's Nuts. N-U-T-S. Yeah. I'm yep. going to guess that wasn't his name given at birth. I think Lee he went with and then somehow changed it to D's Nuts at some point. Uh, A lot of charges against old D's Nuts. He's up for battery, misdemeanor, <laughs> disorderly conduct, use of a dangerous weapon. Uh, court records show that he had his initial appearance. He's back in court on April 24th. I'll bet that looks good on the docket, huh? Yeah, it really yeah. does. Hey, Who's what coming up? What do we got? Oh, I got these nuts. Yeah. <laughs> do you think, though, if you were going to go with that name change, wouldn't you just go with the D's as the first name and nuts as the middle name? Well, D's nuts is the first name. That's just one name. That's a name. Right. Yeah. 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 It's hyphen hyphenated. Yeah, so the hyphenated. You know, you use it as one. Yes, John, sir. thank you. We'll wrap it up there. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know if I need to tell you guys this again, but Linda Keller, she's here for you. It's tax time. It's go time. What do we got here, by the way? Are we... I have a note from Linda. We're almost a month away. I'd like to hear the note before I well, go Well, I on. mistakenly called her Mrs. Miller, but she had a good laugh at that. <laughs> we were talking about uh, taxes last week and the ridiculous uh, <laughs> nonsense by Biden saying, uh, pay your fair share and all that BS. And they write the tax laws. She said, I just wanted to let you know I do four hours of continuing education every month just to keep up with changes in tax wow. laws. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And that you can find on her website. It's just right. I'm looking at it right now. It's under tax information at KellerTaxService.com. She first and foremost wanted me to mention to all of you GLers that have reached out, that's pretty dang cool because she's one of us. She's a listener. She's a GLer. She gets it. She hates the government just as much as we do. So why not go with the best? You can book your appointment online right at the website and she also has Saturday appointments for you so if you're busy during the week like we all are book a Saturday appointment you could do that right there on the website uh, yeah. not that we I hate Saturday. the government yeah we hate the government no it's more that we're confounded by it okay mm -hmm. yeah. that's better Steve I yes John I had a Saturday appointment this past Saturday with Linda. Fantastic. And, uh, we got everything all arranged and uh, my taxes will be uh, coming to me this week or next uh, next week. So. Fantastic. And that's how she operates. She's going to take care of you, your family, your business. All types of tax preparation services are through Keller Tax Service. Go on the website, book that appointment, and please let her know that you heard about her here on the Garage Logic Podcast. This episode is brought to you by FedEx. FedEx knows running a small business is hard enough without the hassle of shipping. That's why there's FedEx One Rate. With FedEx One Rate, you can ship your holiday packages cheaper than the post office for as low as $14.50 for small boxes. Visit FedEx.com slash One Rate for details. Exclusions apply. Valid through January 19th, 2025. FedEx One Rate. Two-day retail shipping, one flat rate. Latte Schmate. Here's Joe Suchere. Well. How you doing? No, it's getting worse in the failed academy. Uh -oh. I got something here from the New York Post. Hundreds of school districts from Maine to Texas that will experience near total darkness during next month's solar eclipse. A total solar eclipse. Okay. Will shut down or end classes early out of abundance of caution. The move is an effort to keep students safe, protecting their eyes from harmful solar radiation oh. and ensuring they safely arrive home as thousands of out of towners crowd <laughs> small town streets to catch a glimpse of the rare cosmic phenomena. With the uh, start of the totality set to hit around the time school lets out across the U.S., many districts are giving the kids the day off wow. to be wow. on the safe side. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. 
Wasn't wasn't an eclipse almost just a rite of passage in the schools? Yes. You'd Forced make the us, little circle yeah. in the paper, yeah. Yeah. and the you box. couldn't wait to go outside, yeah. and you yeah. made yeah. a little contraption. You watched the, the, the thing go over the other planet. Football coach would make us look at it directly, call us sissies and yeah. the P-word. Get we didn't there. actually look right at it. Come on, hey, you little P-words. Now we got Megan Piper, public information officer for Liverpool School District in New York, told News Channel 9 that the district would be closed on April 8, following discussions with local emergency management offices. Wow. Uh, any mention of climate change causing the eclipse? Let's see if we get there. The district had originally planned to hold a half day, but became concerned about getting kids safely to and from school uh, in light of increased traffic because people would be coming to see the eclipse. With parts of central and western New York directly in the totality's path, if it's totality, how can there be any safety issues from looking at it? Well, you, I don't understand it's up what you until, mean. Up until the total eclipse, yeah, the, the rays of the sun after. is still visible. You're tempted to lay. It's like watching a welder. Right. You, you know, they tell you not to look, but <laughs> you got to look. It's don't like you after. remember the former president looked? The solar eclipse. Which one? Don't you remember that? Uh, Mr. Trump. Yeah. He gave it one of these, and then somebody said, no, no. He yelled, yeah. no, no. And Did he say it? It was wow. the most American, ma magnificent. <laughs> tremendous. 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 Yeah. Tremendous. 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 Yeah. tremendous. Tremendous. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, a super of Livingston Public Schools in New Jersey sent a letter to parents <laughs> alerting them it would be dismissing early that day after consulting with the district's physician. Hmm. <laughs> Gee, with, what? with the eclipse expected in Livingston right around 3 o'clock, school bells, some parents and staff had expressed concerns that excited students might damage their eyes trying oh, to sneak a peek. God. This, is, it, this used to be a hell of a country. Yeah. Our physician added that the glare and distraction caused by the eclipse could also present a challenge with driving, which might negatively impact the safety of our parents, staff, and bus drivers. Well, what aren't you going to be afraid of then? I mean, this is just amazing. Uh, more than a dozen districts in Texas have announced they're calling off classes. The metro area in Austin will go dark at uh, 1 36 p.m., but I guess the kids will be home. So that's a shame uh if uh this used to be a place uh, where you would look forward to such a thing and uh we don't do that anymore because of danger mm -hmm. risk management <sighs> abundance of caution mm. consulting with physicians is it them or is it lawyers what what is it i don't know it's just a shame. I know I'm involved with some kids, uh, of kids that I used to have, and they still make the little viewing yeah. devices. Little box. Little and box. Uh, and uh, I'm I'm going to uh, I'll pay it. Well, we don't even get it here though in this part of the country, do we? Are we just going to get a partial? Uh, I don't, you don't know, I don't do you? Know. Yeah, I'm you not going to answer. <laughs> I haven't been briefed on it. Am I taking another break, or was that it? That was it. That was it. Well, then, uh, let me tell you something. Uh, my garage door guy is the whole family, the Minnesota family-owned GL business, veteran-owned business as well. Precision garage door of the Twin Cities in western Wisconsin. They do it all. They do it all the first time. They do their best to get it done the first time so you don't get to the song and dance about running back to the shop, and then all of a sudden the guy looks at the clock when he's back at the shop, he punches out. Oh. He doesn't return. They don't do that. They usually have all the stuff with them, and they do the rollers and the springs, and they'll get you a new door with your consultation. They'll fix the, uh, the opener and the apps on your phone. Whatever you need for a highly functioning and great garage door and garage door service, precision garage door, of the Twin Cities in Western Wisconsin has you covered, and they do not charge more for weekend visits. Visits they uh, they really do a hell of a job because my emails tell me that. Find them at PrecisionDoorMN.com. That's PrecisionDoorMN.com, or call and meet them to see if you're a good fit. Get it? Fit. The garage door must fit, you put or you that, must have quit. Put that right in your contact. Six one two. 
Well, sh- just for first put the word precision. Right. And then 612-263-6985. Renewal by Anderson brings you only because. Mm-hmm. And it's only because they come to us all the way from, uh, we're still in Lake Las Vegas, Nevada, from the Traveling Limans at WorldWideWaftage.com. It was on this day. March 12th. Ruther, Rutherford B. Hayes. Was it Rutherford? Rutherford. Rutherford. Yeah. Rutherford B. Hayes, between terms as governor of Ohio, spent the morning in St. Paul visiting the state capitol and other places of note in the city. He served as U.S. president from 1877 to 1881. On this day, 312, in 1877... Duluth, having suffered a loss of population, reverted from a city back into a town. Hmm. And that's mm-hmm. all we did on this day. Kind of a light Minnesota day. had a light, light day on this day, March 12th. Ah. Thank you, GLers. Yes. <laughs> Um, let's go to the binder, shall we? What's in the binder? What I are we need doing? a what binder. I need a binder. Um, if you can't get enough of Garage Logic, well, you should join the thousands of GLers who have found us on YouTube. All you got to do, just search for Garage Logic Podcast and subscribe for near daily content, including behind the scenes content, full segments, and video shorts. That's Garage Logic Podcast right there. On the YouTubes. Word. It is time once again that we check in with our guy, Mr. Money Talk. Josh Arnold is with us once again here in Garage Logic. And now's the time for you to do the same. So do not delay. Do exactly what I did and pick up that phone and dial 952-925-5608. That number once again is 952-925-5608. You call that number, you get Josh. And he is there for you for that free 48-minute financial consultation. And he's always going to give you the straight talk and never, ever sugarcoated advice. And he's on the line with us once again here in Garage Logic. Josh, so much to get to, including an inflation report. But you know what? You were right. How do you like that? Now, I'm not right all the time. And past performance, of course, there's no guarantee of future results. Markets are always changing. And some of the things I say may not be suitable for you. But higher for longer. Just keep that in your head. Higher for longer. Maintain that in your head. Higher for longer. Because that's what the Fed is going to be doing. Higher for longer. The likelihood of the Fed cutting interest rates before the election, I think, is diminished, I'm not going to say to zero, but diminished pretty strongly as the inflation numbers for two months in a row came in a little bit stronger than expected. Now, a good bit of the rise is due to, da-da-da, gasoline prices are up. And of course, I'm sure that you would have noticed that when you're trying to fill your tank. And it's especially noticed, noticeable on the East Coast and in California, because they have higher taxes on gasoline and more risk restrictions and more regulations which make it more difficult to get gasoline to the to the pump and of course housing costs have ticked up a little little bit now it's not the price necessarily of, of housing although if you've got your property tax assessment for next year you'll probably notice that the your house price went up even just a little bit which means your property taxes will also go up and if I put that into implied rent or mortgage adjusted rent well the there you go. Higher rent, higher gasoline, higher rent bring up inflation costs. Not to mention, of course, used car prices went up. And if you were trying to travel, particularly over the President's Day weekend, you might have noticed that the planes were crowded and there weren't enough seats available. Airline ticket prices also rose, so that contributed to the a rise in the CPI. To me, the trend of both the CPI and we'll see the PPI on Thursday has been heading down and the 
personal consumption uh, expenditure index has also been trending down to be positive for markets. Maybe not so positive for the bond market because bonds, as we have talked, move inversely to interest rates. So as interest rates move up, bond values go down. So one of the reasons I'm not a big proponent of investing in bonds is because I'm making an interest rate bet. Probably the same reason I, I don't want to run out and buy banks. The banks make interest rate bet. Now, just in terms of interest rates, with all the push and hope that the Fed is going to cut interest rates and how that's going to be beneficial to the stock market, as they say in New York, or a few boroughs in New York, forget about it. If interest rates start going down, it's not going to be because inflation is around the corner or cutting, coming down, primarily because the economy is slowing down. Just keep that in mind. Meantime, corporate earnings has still been a little bit better than, than expected. There is or was a pullback in artificial intelligence stocks, which have been trading at astronomical levels, both on a price to sales and price to earnings basis. So please, please be cautious on those specifically. And right now with the move up in them, I would look at those companies, particularly companies like Taiwan Semiconductor, NVIDIA, AMD, as examples, as more trades right now than investments. The valuations are stretched. You want AI? Take a look at much cheaper alternatives, including favorite Amazon, Apple, Google, uh, Meta, and Microsoft. Very good, Mr. Money Talk. You heard him, GLers. Now's the time for you to pick up the phone and make the call for that free, yes, I said free, 48-minute financial consultation by dialing 952-925-5608, where you always get straight talk and never, ever sugar-coated advice. Josh, as always, thank you so much for the time and the chat. Have a great rest of your day, and we'll talk to you again tomorrow. Chris, I will look forward to it. Sounds good. Oh, one real quick thing. Yes, sir. This is quick. You have to award an MVP for agents. <laughs> To Mike McCartney, <laughs> he has got to be in, get the MVP for agents, and he should be in the Agents Hall of Fame right now. No doubt about it, Josh. That contract or series of contracts for Kirk Cousins, more power to him. Talk to you tomorrow. Okay. Investment services offered by Josh Arnold Investment Consultant, LLC, a security investment advisor. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All investments involve risk. All comments and opinions are Josh Arnold's and do not constitute investment advice. Chris Reavers is a paid endorser.